Hi there, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll be talking about Amazon Cognito. So how to use and what are the features and what are the two aspects? Previously it was three, now we have two aspects in this Amazon Cognito. How to implement secure and frictionless computer custom identity and access management and along with the scaling functionality. So uh, basically these are the features given over here. And you can see there more, we can have more along with this free tier. We can have 50,000 active users, free per month. And we can also add the security features. We can scale up to a million of users with the fully managed and high performance, as well as reliable identity store. And it is also cost effective. We can have a proper customer identity and access management. Moreover, we can also federate the sign in using the OIDC or SAML 2.0 connect to a board, a broader group of AWS services and products. So basically it is being like we can use the cognitor user pools or federated identities in order to give access to the AWS resources. So this is how basically it works. So you can see uh, we have a Amazon Cognito that can help you to scale of millions of users. We can gather the user login and custom attributes also we can add it. We can verify and save the registration data during the sign up option. And it can be achieved through this user pool. So we can have a cognitor user pool. Then uh, we'll be talking about this federated through a third party login. Also, we can add it like uh, social media, Facebook, um, Google, and all. We can add it to it. So we have uh, user authentication along with the hosted UI is also there and SDK support is also there. We can customize those things. And we can also ensure local adaptive and authentication biometrics and all we can add it to it. Plus we can have a activate a federated access or OAuth2 and OIDC. Plus we can also have a activate credential broker access that is identity pool. So basically I'll be working on this too, a user pool and identity pool. So in this video, I'll be just focused upon this user pool, how to create a user pool, how to do the uh, sign up and sign in and giving access to your application. And identity pool that will be giving access to the control access to your AWS resources, various resources, whether it's S3 or DynamoDB, any table or S3, anything. So I'll be showing you how we can set up this identity pool also. So let's uh, move on so you can see various use cases over here uh, we can engage customers with flexible authentication b2b identities and machine to machine authentication role based access to the aws resources so these things we can do so in this video i will be just be focusing upon the user pools so cognitive user pools how to create and how we can register the users and give access to the application or any app or web, so web application we can assign. So in the next video, I'll be showing you about the identity pool, how we can create that and how we can utilize that and give access to our AWS resources. So let's move on to the console. So you can see this is the Cognito. You can just type it over here, uh, Cognito. So you to open this same page that I'm, I have opened. So some people might be getting some uh, older interface. I'm using a, just a new interface that is being provided by the AWS. So you will get a small pop-up on the top that whether you want to use the new interface or just you want to continue with the older interface. So you can see over here, start from your business case. So add user directories to your app. So that is a user pool, basically. Grant access to AWS services. That is the identity pool. So I will just focus upon this create user pool. Now you can see over here, your interface might be different. Mine is different. I will switch it back to the older version also in order to uh, show you there is a slight changes in the interface by the AWS. So this is the new interface I'm using. So many of you might be getting the older. So while switching to, while choosing the option for the Cognito, you can uh, choose the interface, whether you want to use the older one or you want to use the new one. Older one was much flexible and giving you uh, like uh, most of the options like uh, recommended options automatically whether uh, we need not choose those things. But here in the new interface, we have to choose. So you can see by default is the Cognitor user pool. We have this option, federated identity providers also. 
So we can utilize this also to sign in credentials from social identity providers like uh, Facebook, Google, Amazon, or Apple, we can use it, but I'm going to use this Cognito user pool. So username, uh, sign in options, email, and the phone number that we can make it and username requirements if you want to make it like username uh, size case sensitive and all but i'm not choosing anything up from here let's click next uh, password policy we can define our custom password policy i will just want to keep it six characters you can uncheck this options if you want temporary password set by administrator to expire in seven days so you can choose multi-factor authentication i'm not enabling this if you choose this one, you need to, you can see it's recommended. You need to set up the SMS that you need to make it separately by the Amazon SNS, that is a simple notification service. You can just have a look into my video about the SNS so you can get an idea like how this SNS will work. So we need to configure that in order to utilize this option, but I am just using this no MFA. Uh, user account recovery, that will be self-service, email only. You can choose email, SMS, whatever you want, you can choose it. And next, enable self-registration. The rest of the things, let it be by default, whatever it is. So emails only. And additional attributes. And now make sure when you are creating a user pool, um, for this like a uh, set of standard attributes based upon your open id that is oidc standard so make it show uh, whatever attributes you are choosing you cannot modify it later so you can see required attributes cannot be changed once the user pool has been created so we have to make it show while creating the pool we choose it accordingly whatever is required we can also define our custom attributes if you want you can create over here we can add our custom attribute. So I'm not adding anything over here. So just I will click add next. So send email with SES, let it be, and send email with Cognito. So that is uh, for the temporary development. We can use this one, this option, because I don't want to configure this SES and all. It will become more uh, like getting into those SES that is the email services that by the AWS. So we need to configure our email over there, then we can utilize that email. So I'm just using the send email with Cognito. By default, there is one no reply and the verification email from which you will be getting the OTP in order to register the user while registration of the user. You can also uh, choose over here, reply to email address from email address. That's your wish. So we can choose this by default one. Otherwise, if you are, providing a different email address, you have to previously verify it with the SES, that is Amazon email services. And uh, SMS, so we have to create a new role. So let's create uh, my Cognito role. And this is my Asia Pacific Singapore I'm choosing. So you might be getting this warning messages over here. So don't bother about it because we are just using for the, um, just for the um, uh, lab of the practice session. So no need to worry as I have to choose this option, temporary start for the development purpose. So that's why you need not to configure all those things. But if you're using for um, SES and also we need to configure all those things, SNS spending limit and all those things. We need to configure it first. Next. So user pool name, my user pool one. And use a Cognito hosted UI that will give you the proper UI in order to sign up and sign in. And you can use the domain. So I'm just putting it over here. Just uh, type, make it sure it is available. And you can use a custom domain also, but again, you need to provide a DNS record and AWS certificate and all those things. If you choose over here, you can see I'm using a custom domain. Then uh, this is my personal website, you can see. So this website is having a certificate associated with it because it is being hosted on the S3 bucket as a static website. So even I have generated the certificate for this website through the AWS certificate manager. So 
This is just if you want to utilize your custom domain, but I will be using the cognitive domain, just this is demo. So just keep it like this. You can see it will be coming to see whether all URL will be there. Now install app client, let it be public client. So let it be client secret. I don't want to generate the client secret in order to embed with my app. Let it be by default blank. Allowed callback URL once it is the user being authenticated where you want to send it cloud tech dot com so i'll be just redirecting the user to the my website you can also add another url if you want rest of the things no need of touching this options over here just click next and just you can have a quick review everything looks fine and then create the user pool So you can click on this. So you can see over here, all the options are coming over here. You can also import the users if you want. Uh, we have the groups and we also have the, we can create the groups and assign it accordingly to that groups. Sign in experience we can have. If you want to add any identity provider, if you want to change the password policy, user account recovery device tracking, if you want to make it then uh, there are lots of options that need to be explored app integration is there so that is the domain that we are having and you can see we also can put a logo over here we can choose the file so i'm choosing this logo let's say and we can save the changes so it will just be added to our hosted cognitive hosted UI and we can also enable that one security but I'm not going into detail of this let's keep it simple just how to utilize this user pool properties also you can look into it lambda if you want to trigger certain lambda and all you can also do that and you can see this is delete protection so if you try to delete this uh, user pool it won't be getting deleted so we need to deactivate it first that will give you the option to deactivate and only you can delete. So this is a, a new interface that is for AWS Cognito. If you switch back to the old console, I like this, the old console is much better in which you get a more detailed options. You can see user and groups, and uh, you can see there are no users over here. It looks quite a little bit uh, a detailed one, but an easy to use interface also. So those who are seeing this older interface, they can use this one. Uh, the same options you will be getting, so nothing to worry. And if you go to the domain name, you can see over here, the same things are there. Just, it has been like just a tree view is given over here. So let's go back. So app client settings. So you can see over here, we get the option to launch. That is missing in the newer interface. So you can just click so you can see with the custom logo, the username and password. So I'll just sign up, click on the sign up over here. So I'll just put this details over here. And password and click sign up. So it has sent a verification code. So let me check my email. Okay, you can see the verification code over here. You can copy this one. So you, this is how you can log in. And if we go back, you can see do not refresh the page and all those things options are coming so you can just go back again and you can go back and you can sign in as a different user i will just put the username
So this is how it works. Now if I go back over here, sign in as a different user, you can see forget your password. So you need to enter the username and then you can continue reset my password. You will get the password reset link. Let me show you over here. Reset my password. So that is the uh, code has been sent to your email. That's the verification code. Seven one. So we are not maintaining all those things. So it is everything is done over here. So you can set up a new password. that's it so we can again log in and we can try anyways so that's all uh, so let's move back to this one and you can just have a look into the users and just you need to refresh it once okay click on the users okay now you can see over here this user is there enabled So we can reset, enable SMS, disable user, add to a group. So these things we can do it easily. So device tracking we haven't enabled. If you enable the device tracking, or uh, so you can see the uh, device tracking and all those things can be seen over here. So this is how we can do. Now, uh, if you want to see all the details, you can see this users and all. So this is how we can utilize in order to give access to our applications and we can maintain the whole user pool of uh, maintain the user pool using the Cognito and you can have your custom domains being added. So it depends and you can also customize the hosted UI that is being provided by putting your logo, you can make some color changes and all those things. You can have your custom CSS also defined. So you can do those things. So you can again go back to the new interface and you can just delete the user pool. So choose this option as there is a delete protection is there. So we can just type it over here, my user pool one. That's my user pool name and click delete. That's it. I hope you like my video. In the next video, I'll be showing you how to create identity pool and how to give access to the AWS resources to the users. Please do like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.